Hey everybody, Texas Trope here, Lance at Perform Shovel on StarMoparts.com. Welcome back to the Ram Revival. We're gonna try to jump in this real quick because I finally got some time to get back on what I need to be doing here. So, from Metra, we've got their part number 95. 6551, this is for the 980202. You know, obviously, if you're half ton, nix that. If you're three quarter, one ton, same thing. But <laughs> uh, all intents and purposes, 98 to 02 double din kit, right? It's basically broken down into two parts. We've got a uh, finished template for our, I guess a uh, finished bezel, I should say, for our main instrument bezel, uh, which you can see there. Then we've got the cut template that we need to throw there. The second part of the kit is kind of just where you come in and make cuts. So, I uh, started this a while back and that weekend just went to a uh, heck in a hand basket. So we're just gonna, gonna roll back here a little bit. So, essentially the step in question right here, this is what they're telling us to do. Remove the shaded area. Now obviously we've got our 12 volt source, you know, your lighter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, coming up, we've got the bottom of that cavity, right? That's where your factory radio would go in. And then the funky looking oval thing right up here, that is actually just going to be a duct. So now this hopefully kind of places it for you. This is the funky oval shaped thing. That is the roof of the radio opening. There is the floor of the radio opening. And right here is our 12 volt outlet. Now, in retrospect, in hindsight, if you were like me, if you pulled your dash all the way out and you went ahead and you prepped it and painted it and all that good stuff, the best time to do this would honestly probably be with the sub-dash not connected to the dash frame. Essentially what that means, plastic, metal, trim this when it's not connected, nothing's assembled, you have the best access to it. However, I was very leery of that. The thought crossed my mind, but every single time that I attempted to m move the plastic sub dash, it would flex. You kind of need like two people. Uh, best way to handle it, it's not like a man on each end. This thing's super lightweight. You can manhandle it, but ideally I would grab over here and in the middle, and then the next person would grab in the middle and on the opposite side just to keep it from flexing. Uh, there's quite a few cracks I found that didn't used to be there, and that's again from minimal movement, basically from the back of the duster to the tailgate for reassembly. And that scares the snot out of me because again, these aren't reproduced. <laughs> so, uh, if you look online, there's really not a lot of information, there's not a lot of videos, there's maybe two or three that I can find. Again, titles sometimes play a big thing, key tags, keywords, search phrases, all that stuff. Um, you know, like if for example, if I uploaded this and it was WMV.0126, you're probably not going to find it, right? So, there could be more out there, but if there is, it's super difficult to find. Same with forum posts. But essentially, what the instructions from Metro tell us to do is to trim the floor. And if you look, and this is critical, they're not having you just cut the whole thing out. They're not wanting you to hack it all up, right? You essentially have a dot and a tab, right? We're gonna work on the left side right there. Coming in above the 12 volt outlet, you're going to have a slot and a dot, right? Dot being to the left of the slot. <laughs> so if I can swing this for you, this would be the dot, this would be the slot. The slot right here with the red felt pad, that is actually where a clip will plug in from your bezel. The dot, that's actually nothing more than like a locating pin uh, for your factory bezels, if I'm not mistaken. One of them could be a screw hole. It's been a while. I think the top one is the locator, and I think the bottom one is a factory location for the, you know, brackets on your factory radio. If you look, though, you're not hacking that out. You're going back. There's like that triangle right in line with the dot. If you look down there, you can see that black Sharpie line. That's my projected cut. Same thing over here. We're essentially between these two pieces of felt and that jagged looking thing that's black. That's my line of my projected cut. Now, in the minimal number of posts I found, you gotta realize, I think the big reason for the lack of information on this, who expects a double din kit to be released for a truck from say the model year 2000, 18 or 19 years later, right? I may have misspoke. This actually, I think, came out in 2019, not 2018. <laughs> so, it's unexpected, right? And a lot of people that would have done this stuff, it's gone. Maybe now it's just work trucks. Maybe you've already, you know, cut the dash up and done an iPad or something. Who knows? But there's just not a ton of information. That said, what people are saying 
is that in addition to trimming the bottom, they had to trim the top. And this also comes from a lot of people. Keep in mind, we're doing a full-fledged double din here. Uh, it's not one of those like, you know, media-based receivers where we're just streaming and doing everything. I've got a disc drive in here where you can play CDs, DVDs, whatever. It's the full double din experience, right? That's important because a lot of times when you have just the double din screen, but it's say no disk drive, they reduce that down to like single din specs. So is it in the middle? Is it all at the top? Is it all at the bottom? Different manufacturers do different things. Your results may vary, but the consensus from the threads I've been able to find in the few videos there are is people thought, you know, they'd get by just trimming the bottom. They wind up having to trim the top, whether it be for adjustments or tilt uh, or to get the depth position correctly. With us going the full double din route, it's uh, just one of those things. So what I've done here, if you're uh, very familiar with double dins, you'll know that there's something amiss. <laughs> so what's amiss is the screw is they're out of this thing, right? So that's just our top cover. Obviously, there's you know some important uh, circuit board and stuff in there that you don't want dust or full access to. Which once you once you hack up the top, that would actually be what's happening. But I kind of want to showcase this to you. If you note, there's a couple of dark spots along the left in the middle and just one kind of line right there on the side and then you've got kind of the saddle tan color and then you've got the really dark muddy clay color what that's been is me test fitting this thing trying to see like hey do i really need to cut the bottom and the top do i need to cut the top and maybe leave the bottom uh, because again the way this plastic has been obviously we've got the brand new lmc dash up top we know it's frail uh it wasn't followed under you know the best set of circumstances to prep it doesn't necessarily age that well and trying to protect it and mitigate anything we can do i would like to leave as much structurally in place as possible so i've shoved this down in many many times test fitting and uh, as i try to awkwardly set that down without dropping it I do believe, like if you look, you don't really see a whole lot of scrapes on the bottom, just a few kind of in this area. But on the top, they're very prevalent, right here, here, and then again, the long line there, you can feel them sort of with your finger if you were here in person. That makes me think that the top is for sure a weak link. Um, similarly, there's a couple of raised spots on the bottom that I think are gonna be bad. Now, if you know, there's already a giant gash here. That's as cast from the factory. That's part of the mold. That's not something we've pre-cut out or anything like that. So, if I were to do this, if I, if you're watching this in advance of tackling this yourself, you're doing the same stuff I'm doing, the dash, painting the frame, whatever, even just bits and pieces of it. If your plan is to do a double din, or you had no clue there was a double din, and now you do know that there's a double din, I would advise carefully getting this to a workbench. I'm not talking like two sawhorses. I'm talking something that's got like an eight foot work surface where this will have minimal flex. We've got plenty of space. I would set it down. I would trim it there. Now, most of you are going to do this in the truck, right? So you've got that extra rigidity, which is great. Uh, you know, you got to clean up a little bit more if that's your thing or what you're worried about. Most of it should fall down, you know, towards your uh, four wheel drive shifter or your, you know, trans tunnel, if you will. But what I might advise you to do is to trim this without the sub dash. It'll be easier to get to everything. And then I think what I would have done, and I don't think I'll be able to do it here, plus I really need to get the truck back together so I can drive it, <laughs> is rig something up, whether it's unistrut that you bend in a vise. I mean, anyone can do that. If you don't have a vise, you could literally stand on it and bend it. Uh, you could find something that you could just wrap it around and get roughly a 90 degree bend out of it. I would reinforce this. I would have the unistrut on this side and I would run it up and over to that side. I might possibly do the same thing on the bottom. Uh, seems like overkill, but that little bit of structure that you're adding in, I think would be a very valuable thing down the line. Now, uh, for me, I'm not planning to sell the truck. I'm planning to keep it, obviously at this point especially. But that is, I think, probably the best way to do it. Getting a true cage in here, like a doubled-in cage, that might be a nightmare. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you had to trim out the sidewalls even. It just adds that much. I mean, we're talking like, you know, sixteenths of an inch here. Sixteenth uh, and a sixteenth here is an eighth, right? It adds up when you're trimming and cutting and, you know, running the, running the risk of losing the structure. It's all very, very important. But uh, without further ado, 
I'm going to come in here. Something else I've seen, virtually everyone that's done this uses like a tiny, tiny hacksaw. Uh, one of the one-sided ones. I don't even own one of those. Uh, I'm shocked that so many people that have done this have those types of saws and don't have a Dremel tool. I would think that like having a rotary tool would be far more likely than having one of those. I don't know if they produce a better cut. I don't know if it's the person that has handy. I don't really know, but typically when I cut plastic, I've had really good luck with a Dremel. Uh, that's probably what I'll do unless we get some funky, funky cuts or I'm not happy with the way it's... Uh, you know, edge is looking, but uh, that is the strategy for this portion of our dash. Now, uh, the second thing I'm going to be doing while we're off camera is really step number one here. And you might wait to do this if you just bought a bezel like me, or you acquired a good used one, or one you're happy with, or something. Maybe do all this stuff, see if you're happy with the way everything turns out and fits before you hack into your brand new bezel. Just advice. <laughs> but, uh, basically right here, they want you to put the cut template, snap it in place. Again, you're going to make sure that it lines up. There will be contours you need to match. We'll have the thick piece to the left. And we're basically going to be cutting out a little bit from the top and a little bit from the bottom. The good news on those cuts is you've got your finished bezel that's going to snip in over the top of that, kind of nestle the radio into the uh, bezel, and it should cover up any jagged or uneven cut lines that you're not super happy with. But again, measure twice, cut once, scribe it twice in this case, cut once. If you want to sneak up on the cut, do that you don't want to come in and you know draw your line and cut below it and then not have your finished bezel fit so uh, just to sort of quickly walk you through what i think this should be like and i might have like a little bit of action from it i don't know uh, again it's kind of hard to <laughs> do this stuff solo but this is our brand new lmc bezel right this the kind of ugly looking one uh, not polished or finished out is your cut template it snaps in place all right uh, you want to make sure the thicker side is to the left towards your heater controls, your gauge cluster, whatever you need to reference it as. Thinner side here towards the cubby hole or your heated seats if you're fancy, <laughs> right there. This area that you see exposed inside this bezel, all this where my finger's running and all this at the top. We're going to mark that, we're going to cut it. That's required for the double din to fit through the bezel. So. As mentioned though, you get a nice little bit of leeway here because they do include a very nice, in my opinion. Now, if you've got a wood grain bezel, which I'm not a fan of wood grain, I would switch, you know, if it was me. Uh, but if you're all about wood grain, you know, this might contrast, maybe you can coat it, dip it, uh, you know, do something. But if you've got the brand new LMC bezel, these two plastics are actually a really good match. This matches much better with this brand new LMC than it does my original factory piece. The original factory piece is actually more akin to what you see with the cut template. It's kind of like a little bit glossier, doesn't have as much texture. Again, I can't remember back that far. If it's just age, I don't ever remember being thinking like, hey, you know, my texture's gone, <laughs> right? But the good news is for this brand new LMC bezel, uh, this actually works quite well the, in terms of matching. So it's going to blend right in again. If you have like cherry wood dash or wood grain or something you bought years and years ago, this will still snip in place. It just may clash. It may not be the aesthetic that you would hope for, right? So the good news is you could take this, see if somebody can hydro dip it, uh, if you can wrap it, if you can paint it, if you didn't want to switch the whole truck up, whatever. But please keep that in mind. But again, for me, if you follow the route I went here, this is almost like an identical piece, you know, so uh, very good news there. But that's kind of how that will come together. So without further ado, I'm going to shut up and uh, I'm going to go to town here with, I guess, my Dremel tool. So uh, once again, over here on the, on the hatch of the snapper, which has been converted into a temporary work surface for me, a random little kit I picked up recently from uh, Harbor Freight. I'll probably just use that since it's handy. I've still got a crud ton of the little uh, tin packs from Craftsman. Uh, it's not necessarily a Dremel I have. It's a Craftsman from way back in the day. Same thing. Any rotary tool should be able to handle this, get the job done. Uh, it is nice in some cases to have different diameter cutoff wheels. Sometimes you might need to be really tight. Either have one that's worn or small from the factory. That way you've got plenty of clearance, you're not going to cut into an adjacent wall that you don't intend to trim. And in some cases it might be nice to have a really big one so you can just make one pass and get one clean cut. So uh, the more blades, the more cutoff wheels, whatever you want to call them, discs that you have available, uh, the better off you'll be. But uh, 
with a little Kenwood here, we'll hopefully be having a new home pretty soon. So, uh, like I said, a lot of talky talky here with a lot <laughs> lack of action, but it's all important to note uh, because again, you don't want to just come in and start hacking out this whole bottom. Let's try to do what Metra said and kind of leave some intact there. And uh, ultimately what I will do after the fact is see if I'm comfortable with it. And if I decide to brace it, we'll tackle that bridge when we get there. But uh, that's the plan. I'm going to start cutting and uh, hopefully uh, things go well. All right, so about to get cutting here. Here's my weapon of choice. Again, Craftsman Rotary Tool Dremel, El Cheapo, any off-brand, whatever you've got is going to get the job done. It's plastic <laughs> right here. Have not tried the Harbor Freight cutoff disc. I figured I would go ahead and uh, give it a crack on plastic here. But uh, I've got plenty of the old Craftsman ones that have served me well. And then right here, pro tip, a little mandrel right there. Tiny, tiny slotted screw. If you've got the Hazette pocket driver that's got the plastic scraper for labels, perfect size. So uh, I tried to set the tripod up for this. I can't really get a good angle. It's just, it's actually pretty tall. You know, this is an off-road truck, so it's lifted a bit. But I'm going to come in, see what we can do with these cuts again. Reference the diagram, make your angled lines, go to town, and then we'll test fit kind of the doubled in with the bottom gone, top in place, and then see what if how to what extent we have to remove on the top so uh, without further ado i'm gonna get cutting all right so i've tried a couple of different things here the first cutoff wheel just fractured and splintered the second one did the same thing i decided they're not the best quality in the world <laughs> and uh, i tried routing the dremel tool inside the cavity over to here i actually came up quite a bit on this side and then what i was unable to do is replicate that here so i went to a really small kind of grinding tip here and it's actually worked quite well i was able to kind of pinhole in three holes kind of on my crooked little line there and uh, determine where I needed to be and right now what I figured I'd do is kind of show you how this is cutting again nothing crazy just a grinding tip so let's see what we can do So is it ideal? I don't really know yet, but you can kind of see it start to give as soon as we pull that out. But that's a relatively clean cut. I'm trying to kind of look at the camera here so we don't look uh, too crazy. It's relatively clean, I have to say. Uh, for the grinding wheel, I can just come in and kind of clean that up with uh, some, some sand rolls or something. Big question is, I'm not sure if we have to maybe knock a little bit off of the top here. Again, I realize you're totally disoriented based on the camera angle, but uh, we got the floor out where we needed it, and uh, we'll see if there's any clearance issues here. Again, this was already broken. It's one of the flex points I discovered. I'm going to try to set this down in case I need to mirror it. A uh, smart thing to do, uh, just come in, draw a line across there, put an A and an A or something in the event that you have to, you know, JB weld this or plastic weld it type of a thing. Now, sadly, we don't have that cool access point on this side. Um, but I think what I'll try to do is just get the rest of that floor out and then we'll do a mock fit with that. I think it ought to be easier to cut the top, especially now with this window out. We could kind of maybe go to town, but I have left this in place for now. And then again, if we do decide to build a brace or something, we can do that. But so, uh, like I said, I'm uh, not quite sure what they intended me to use this for. <laughs> but the uh, literally the tiniest angle when I just treated it like a drill. And then keep in mind, you've only got like that much area to work with. The rest of this is just the mandrel. But uh, we just kind of come in and I treat it like a saw as we spin and produced a pretty clean cut so uh, I'll get back on it see what we can do with the floor over here make our test fit run and to see what we need to do up top all right so quick update we've obviously got that chunk out and the reason I haven't totally removed that is one we retain the bezel clip but two I mean it's broken from that tab so it'll essentially sink again my 
goal here is to leave as much structurally as possible. I've got the cut done kind of angling down. I've not removed this piece. I wanted to see what it did as we slid it in. The point of contention, in my opinion, still seems to be the top. And uh, we've got this positioned again, basically from there down at an angle back this direction. That floor, you know, I can manipulate and bend back. So that tells me that the top is still an issue. And I'm thinking that we might come in and kind of leave a border, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch on each side. And just cut that top section out and uh, see see if maybe that'll help us out here so uh, still kind of test fitting some things it's a mess down in there I'll have to get a vacuum out here in a little bit but uh, you can kind of see we've got our cut done there and then obviously we would need to bring it back but again I'm thinking I just feel like the top is where you should probably start so maybe we should have gone with the gut instinct instead of the instructions <laughs> so I'm thinking we're gonna have to cut it anyway so I'm probably gonna jump in there and see what we can do yeah, all right it's a brand new day here didn't have much time last night but uh, the carnage remains the cutoff discs from that kit right there 1999 at Harbor Freight suck don't buy them <laughs> at least not for the cutoff tools uh, that said, back in again, patiently going about this, trying again to remove as little as possible. And where we're at, I just wanted to kind of rest this in place. This is roughly where I think the brackets in the kit would position it, uh, basically going by the confines there and then spacing a little bit from that side. And if I bring it to the top, you'll, uh, you can kind of tell I've got a Sharpie line there, but you'll see I've uh, gone ahead, I've reassembled the top lid here to the uh, head unit. I've got the line there indicating the mark and then you can see it's flat and it kicks up and I'm thinking we're going to have to cut all along that for this to clear again part of me kind of wonders what this would have been like had I have done it how I wanted to which is cut the top first but <laughs> uh right it man it's hard to see that black line isn't it I don't know if it's my fogged up safety glasses or what but trust me there's a black line there and it's just slightly above that let me see. I'm trying not to drop the head unit. That's the most important thing right now, believe it or not. Well, right there. Again, this line indicates where it's the edge of our head unit. And then this sort of mirrors the lid. Kicks up like so. So there's a very real chance that we'll cut this out here. And possibly even to this point, just to make it a uniform structure. Might even have to go a little bit wider than we currently have it. I realize that's super blurry, but it's just the lighting very hard to pick up on the black on the tan dash for some reason but uh, we'll try that and again the goal remains not just lop everything out and make this fit that's easy but what we're wanting to do is approach it carefully and see how much material we can actually leave in place so i think that's what i'm going to do is just extend this up and i think where we're going wrong with these cutoff wheels which you know that's kind of what we have um, I'm thinking if we had something maybe twice as thick because what's happening is as we go through here this looks relatively good and then you'll see like dip downs and stuff it's making the cuts real clean but then like the molten plastic is backfilling and kind of it's cut but it's also then re-welded itself in place if that makes any sense the ideal tool here um, Keep in mind, at this work height, everything that blows up is basically bouncing off my chest. <laughs> so, uh, to bust out the pneumatic stuff and really ramp up the speeds is a little scary, because uh, those would be higher quality discs, which, to their credit, may not break. But the issue, we don't want to cut from this side to the top side. See how this, you don't even know there's a cut underneath there. Uh, it's basically a gap between these two top and bottom segments. So what I'm thinking, we make do with what we've got. Maybe I go get the Craftsman discs uh, because again, those typically wear down to the point that they're not functional. You know, you're running the mandrel against the material uh, because they've worn down. These Harbor Freight ones are just shattering uh, at ridiculous pace. <laughs> and, uh, we'll see what we can do here, but I do think I'll extend that up. Um, I thought about a jigsaw last night. I just I don't think it's the right choice here. Really, what someone needs to make. I don't know that you've seen the rotary tool. I guess in the uh, cut segments we did. If someone would make a stubby version of that, like this would be the equivalent of that V-hub back there. 
If we had something obviously not that size, but you know about half of this size or you know 33%, it doesn't have to be super powerful, but it would allow us to get in here and access these tight spaces way, way better. But uh, anyway, that's my plan of action is I think I'm just going to make this cut all the way around here and then kind of meet this up and uh, then see if we have to take out that whole section. So again, my apologies on the lighting. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, uh, without further ado, I'm going to get to work, see if we can't make some progress here today. <laughs> So that's the issue we've got. If I speed it up like you saw there, it just absolutely liquefies the plastic. Uh, this is actually a heavier duty Craftsman disc, which is a bit thicker. I was hoping it would mitigate these problems, but it's clearly not. So uh, it'll be a long go, but I think we're just gonna go about it. Uh, maybe I'll switch to a, a grinding bit and see if that works any better for us. But I was hoping since this was a flush cut and we could come in and hit it, uh, it might not be an issue, but again, um, Maybe if we had slightly different embraces, we'd be doing better. <laughs> so, anyway, nothing to see here. I guess I'll uh, shut the camera off and we'll just get back to work. All right, let me get this mask down. <laughs> so, needless to say, I don't know that I've mentioned it, but obviously safety glasses, mask, uh, the cutoff wheels put off a nasty smell, and then, of course, you just got plastic shards flying everywhere. But uh, I got to tell you, I uh, made some decent progress. I'm not super happy with the way this looks, in part just because, again, even with the heavier duty, uh, that's literally what they are, is heavy duty cutoff wheels, which are a bit thicker. Uh, you can kind of see we've added some tools to the arsenal, the channel lock cable cutters, those came in handy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't use the Knipex, so I was kind of wanting to save those for tests, so we went ahead and used the uh, exposed set of VHA bicutters. cutters. I got a couple of scoring knives, some gloves, all kinds of stuff, but this piece is the top, right? We've got driver side, passenger side is what that means. Obviously, it's quite difficult to get in there at a good angle. Uh, once again, a stubby or a right angle rotary tool uh, would be a, a wonderful little device. But if you know, this is how this is. And when I flip that down, you'll see that kind of reinforcement rib right there. That's actually what I use the uh, different cutters to sort of lop off. Got some more pieces down there. But when I bring you up here, You'll note we've made significant progress. This thing is like recessed all the way now. Like it's stopped because it's resting on the vent, which I think that's farther than it will need to go. So let's pull it out, which I can't do because it's caught. Uh, let me, uh, I don't want to again trash the head unit, but I will say I use the instructions here. Carefully remove them, you'll see why. To keep shards from going into the defroster vent. <laughs> so this is basically trimmed. I want to get the head unit out and show it to you and uh, we'll kind of walk you through what I did and why we did it. All right, so that's basically it. Obviously we haven't smoothed it out. It's at a weird angle. You got to realize the dash again on the tailgate, you sort of have to stand upright like this. And then in addition to that, it's angled and it's also slanted a bit. It's really hard to tell, but just run with me. And then obviously the rotary tool is too big for this cavity and you can't really, you know, if you were to go straight down, you can't because it would bottom out. So I've got a little bit of an angle on it that I'm not super, super content with. But the bottom line is I got the head unit in. I honestly don't know if you would even have to have cut the bottom of the floor out. Obviously, I, I wish I would have gone with my gut and just done the top first because that's where I saw interference. But... Um, on the bottom again since this is broken and that was broken prior to us cutting there's that tab there that can kind of be pressed down same thing you sort of got like a stop over there uh, we'd have to do measurements to see how the depth checks i did slit the floor here so it's got a little bit of flex i didn't really want to cut this because it's just open up then to your 12 volt power outlet and cigarette lighter as far as i know but uh, the top is totally out of there that is the rib in the middle that's why that looks funky but uh, I think I'll just kind of clean this up and call this good. Uh, what I wound up using was just another like uh, grinding a rotary tip there. And I think that's probably 
what I'm going to try to use on the bezel which part of me wanted to just whip it out with a cutoff wheel and the problem is I think it's going to backfill so much that I'd have to come in and cut like if this is my line right here and I was going to use a cutoff wheel I would have to start here and then I have all the backfill where it's plastic welding itself even on the lowest settings I mean I've not been able to find a way to make it happen with this plastic uh, obviously the faster you go the cleaner the cut but you're generating more heat and you're basically backfilling on the top and the bottom at that point in time so I'm thinking we may if I do use a cutoff wheel we'd have to come in and then clean it up with the rotary bit I may just go in with the rotary bit and slide across and uh, see if we can't do it that way but this is basically wrapped up the head unit fits uh, it was a plug that was caught down there on all those you know vent clips and everything need to clean it up the cut and all the shavings so we'll probably do that and then i'll see if we can't maybe get some uh, action shots of the bezel being cut all right so here we are on my pretty pretty fancy little temporary workstation <laughs> it's, uh, we've got the main sub dash trimmed out kind of like we want it right and we're coming over here this is actually what they want you to do first again my advice see what you can tackle there and then decide if you want to cut up your bezel particularly if it is brand new so uh, what they want us to do is to come in and take the cut template snap it in right here scribe the lines and remove the darkened area so you're not trimming on the sides you're only going to be trimming on the top and bottom maybe round into a corner but pay attention here note that the left side the driver's side the side closest to the heater controls and your gauge cluster as we mentioned is thicker this side over here towards the passenger side is going to be thinner so we'll come in this is our finished template again look at how close of a match that is with the factory bezel which I have right over there I'll try to remember to show you mine is a lot glossier it doesn't have this kind of a flat textured look it's kind of more of like a shiny uh, low textured gloss but anyway again it kind of matches what the cut template is so we've got the thick side here we want that to the left or the driver's side we've got the thinner side here we want that towards the passenger side now we're gonna come in we're gonna snap that into place which again is kind of awkward with a tripod in front of you but basically uh, if we were to come in let's actually try let me move the camera over here which is pretty difficult to do let's see if we can zoom in for you and uh, I'm gonna try the black sharpie first just so we see what it looks like so I'm gonna come in gonna indicate there across the top again apply pressure on the template when possible I want to do that there, here, and there. Again, anytime you do this stuff, remember if you cut too much, you've screwed up. If you didn't cut enough, it's not the end of the world. You can approach it slowly, kind of like if you were machining something, right? So I'm going to snap this out. I can actually see that fairly well in the camera. I think if you train your eye on it, you'll eventually see it. Uh, for example, right here, you can find that 90 come across ends there again I do have a silver sharpie obviously contrasting colors are better however they could also stick out uh, but to kind of give you an idea of what will be removed that is our finished bezel on top of the cut template so uh, let's see here we'll take the flexible style villa and I would say that that is let's see about half of an inch if you were to measure all the way I realize the camera's not going to show you that but uh, let me try and see if we can come in again pay attention to this side that's our inches just where I have it positioned is the half inch mark on the sharpie line and that's essentially what we're taking out there so I'm gonna go ahead I guess and trim that again I also have here at my disposal a scribe so we could just as easily come in throw this down again it sort of depends what your weapon of choice is and uh, we could come in and just scribe that I want you to sort of hard from an angle but you know work with what you get <laughs> so now that traced over perfectly that's why you don't see the scribe line in the plastic it's on the sharpie uh, I think again I will try the rotary bit here to just cut that out I'm having issues even at slow speeds with the thicker cutoff wheel on the rotary tool where it's back filling uh, and essentially plastic welding itself like that trail of molten plastic so uh, the rotary bit may be the way to go my advice 
come in whether you just use the bit itself or drill you know have a couple of slots that you pick maybe three corners and one in the middle and that'll allow you to work towards it you could even split it up have you know two here kind of lined up with the buttons on the vents so five holes across the top when you hit that hole that you've drilled back up and while that's still somewhat soft and cooling go ahead and cut it out that'll kind of protect the line that you've done uh, if possible i'll try to record this again my issue is i'm over here and the piece is here where the camera's at but uh i'll see if i can maybe try to get a little bit of an action shot for you so main thing though we just want this finished bezel to clip in and we want our head unit to pass through clearly a double din is not going to fit through there so now, without further ado i'm going to go grab my tools move my extension cords and get to cutting All right, so what I hope you just saw me do, which I realize is kind of hard with the arms and everything, but again, one-man show. Uh, here at the top, five holes across. We've got one in each corner, one in the middle, kind of split the distance between the two, sort of wound up with where the vents are. Back it out so you can see it a little better. And then right here, you saw me work the bottom, exact same thing. The plan, using this rotary bit, which you can hopefully see, just going to go A to B and back. Again, the goal there is to prevent this from plastic welding itself shut as we go. Again, that's the issue I've been having with the discs. So I believe we'll just go make our cut, backtrack. I'm a little bit inside of the line. Again, that's something that we can approach. We can sand it. We can file it. We can do whatever we want to. You can cut too little. You're just fine. You cut too much. You're screwed brand new bezel we've ruined it we don't want to do that something that i do try from time to time is kind of keep the instructions here just to keep plastic out of the vents uh, they sort of fall with the vibrations but uh, we'll see if we can get them to stay but anyway that's what i'm going to do is come in and start cutting here and uh, sort of see what we wind up with all right so first run here i figured i'd take you with me we'll see how it goes again a to b and back just to try and prevent the backfill So I'm going to shut the camera off so I can actually do a good job of this. Again, the goal there was to try to keep myself out of the frame so you could sort of see what we're doing. Don't know if I pulled that off or not. But what I can tell you is apparently with five, <laughs> it is uh, still a little bit uh, too far of a distance here to prevent backfill. So I think I'm going to need to uh, basically split the distance essentially where we have, you know, holes three and four. We're going to have to have three and a half. And uh, that still may be too far, but again, just play with it. You don't have to actually go hold a hold. You can kind of come in and stop like I was doing. Quickly realized that was going to be an issue. Let me uh, kind of hold that in place. You can see the problem. I mean, it's just molten around there. And uh, we'll have to get some pliers, see if we can get that off. But we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll switch up to a cutoff wheel, see if I get lucky there. But uh, that's essentially what we're going to be doing. Maybe I'll have another clip or two for you, but I just want to be right above the workpiece because uh, as much as I'd like to show you what I do, I'd prefer to have a really good finished result here. So it's easier for me to do that without the camera taking up my workspace. So I'm going to do that. We'll be back for a progress point. All right. So switching to the cutoff wheel here, we've actually made a little decent progress. It's mainly because I could not get the plastic off of the uh, um, rotary bit we were using. So what I'm doing, you kind of want to factor in again, this is the heavy duty. We use that very lightly. So what we want to do is factor that in, come up a little bit. And as much as I try, again, if you just you know cut it all the way through and then buzz through you're just going to backfill and plastic weld it all and have to make multiple cuts it's going to look terrible so essentially what i've been trying to do is dot to dot is just light cut a little deeper a little bit deeper let it cool a little bit deeper and sort of work our way to it if that makes any sense so i'll try to get an action shot here so you can kind of see what i'm doing maybe it'll work well for you to replicate it and then after that we're just going to knock the thing out so anyway we're going to go dot to dot here on this side I have not cut the edge here or there maybe we'll try to do that as well Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so my initial impressions here are actually lifting way more frequently. That wasn't, it was a little kickback, but it was mainly me lifting. Uh, that's actually produced the cleanest cut you can see. Hopefully as I train this way, there's just way more crud here as opposed to here that we just cut. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and see if we can replicate that here, and then we'll try to cut this off. The pause was me trying to get the camera flipped out so I could see what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, A to B, I think I'm going to make a pass and lift. It actually starts to melt a little bit before you can do that. So again, if you're recreating what I did, maybe split the dots. You know, essentially have nine of them instead of five type of a deal. But anyway, let's get back to it. Alright, so with the exception of back over here, I've been pretty happy with this uh, here and there. The only issue is you do have a little bit of backfill. I sort of try now to manipulate a little bit better, but I'm going to go ahead and lop this off. We can kind of look at the end result and evaluate our different cut styles, so let's see how long that takes us. Alright, so there we are. <laughs> and, uh, I have to say it is a little bit more uniform over here. Again, we'll file that all. It should look pretty decent, I think, when we're done. But lots more little uh, backfill pieces of that direction. But overall, pretty good. Again, the plan was to cut inside so we have space to clean up. If you saw one time, again, this is mainly... The awkward pauses, I was trying to keep myself out of that. I realized I think on some of these I probably blocked it. Uh, but the one time where it looked like the uh, rotary tool jumped up and got me. Uh, not sure that you can see that. Let's zoom in a little bit. It's pretty, pretty hilarious, really. Uh, again, I'm working off to the side, which I typically don't do. And everything's inverted. But on my thumbnail, where it looks like there's a... <laughs> uh, sanding just bouncing off of it there is so uh, no harm though and uh, what I'm gonna do is just repeat all of that here won't make you sit through it won't time lapse it or anything same thing I'm hoping though I can get the better result here with our new strategy and then ultimately I'll follow this down we'll see how it looks all right so here we are after making the cut let's see if we can sever this indeed we can <laughs> so, so we'll set that off up here I'll take the bottom place it there and so what I want to do now the battery light is flashing but uh, what I'm gonna do is try to just clean this up with a file and kind of see what we've got and then we will snap this bad boy in so let's go ahead and test fit her if we can I think once the edges are knocked down that'll be uh, pretty solid so pay no attention to the gaps just yet I got some cleanup to do and we'll see what the final result is all right and just like that a little bit of uh, filing and sanding later we've got the Metra bezel popped into our LMC replacement bezel so uh, again you can really really see here what I'm talking about when I say how good of a match it is between these two kits so uh, if your factory bezel is cracked this is certainly one perk it's a hard pill to swallow out and pay you know 180 bucks to get that uh, brand new bezel but uh, you get new vents and uh, you get a different color different texture and it just happens to match perfectly uh, with what you get in the metric kit so I'll probably do a little bit more additional cleanup um, again you could probably in all honesty after all the trimming that I had to do off camera you could probably just whack it off right to the template and uh, still probably have to sand a little bit and call it good again I didn't know that I come in I like to play safe and subsequently trimmed inside of the template just a little bit and that ultimately just resulted in more work for me but given the fact that we just did the sub dash and the bottom basically didn't get cut out and the top did you're kind of a little leery on the instructions anyway so the battery light is flashing let me try to grab this for you without knocking the camera over So what I have in my hand, and I'm going to again fight the camera here, is the factory bezel. Just laying this out, uh, which is hard to do, let me grab the camera. I think you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So, 
factory bezel here in the foreground in the background is the LMC one this one is obviously it's cracked but it's a darker glossier black uh, I guess it does have decent texture to it again but it's just a darker black uh, the LMC could wind up aging that way. It might fade and turn lighter. I don't know, but this is the original bezel versus the LMC. And again, the original one, I could actually repair that crack, use it. We'll probably just archive it, shelve it, try to keep it intact. <laughs> and uh, a little years down the line, maybe we'll get to use it on a project. Maybe we'll have to pull the vents. Who knows? Uh, but for all intents and purposes, since the battery light is flashing and we're running out of space, we're going to call this good. So we've got the LMC bezel trimmed fitted to the metra double din kit which you can see that bezel there and then if i take you over here dodging everything we've got our sub dash trimmed out uh, i don't know that you've seen it in this state or not i still not cleaned it obviously there's plastic everywhere but the double din fits and uh you know whether we can square that up a little bit more or not from here this looks square but you know when i move the camera you can see it's not, it's really hard to explain if you're doing this yourself, I think you'll relate to it. <laughs> so it's also just impossible to get a good cutoff tool in there. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna clean this up. If there's a little time left, I'll try to maybe mock that up with the double den inside because that's really the payoff. So uh, past this, I guess in our next video, I'm gonna come in, try to repair this sucker. I'm tempted to do the others, but they haven't technically failed yet. So we may just, Create this if we like it, replicate it before we bolt it up, and then throw the dash back in the truck so it'll be ready for our double din, which is a huge upgrade. <laughs> so, let me see if I can shut up, get over there, and possibly mock this up for you after I've cleaned it up. Oh yeah, wrapping up Sunday night on a good night right here. You're about to witness it coming up. Something's not quite like it used to be, right? That's the floor we cut out. Not sure we even had to because the top seemed to do the trick, but uh, there is... The potential issue when we get this in the truck, if we want to angle the head unit, anything like that, face it optimally towards the driver compartment, so on and so forth. Maybe we have to trim a little bit more, who knows? But for right now, check this out. You'll see the bezel, right? I don't have this seated, obviously not like staked down with the clips or anything, but check it out. That is the payoff, that is the money shot. That's what we've waited. My apologies, I have to stand on my tiptoes to get you a decent angle of that. <laughs> so, there it is, brand new LMC instrument bezel with the Metra Double Din install kit for 9802 Rams. That's kind of the steps involved, that's how we tackled it. Again, my advice when you cut this, just go straight to town. You don't really have to sneak up on it. It'll still fight you a little bit unless you cut over. Uh, but as long as you're on the line or just inside of it, I think you'll save yourself some time in the long run. Again, err on the side of caution. That's what I did. But uh, what I found, that would be what I would advise you to do. Again, in terms of cutting the sub dash, I would check it like I did. The Kenwood might be different. You know, maybe a Pioneer's got the bulge on the bottom. Maybe an Alpine has a bulge on the sides. Who knows? But regardless, check for your points. If you want to cut the floor out first, like the instructions say, do that. Instructions, again, don't even mention going up top. I found that the interference was at the top. That's what allowed this to drop in. And I should point out that is with the brackets. You can kind of see the little plastic piece there. Obviously not screwed in place. Uh, they are attached to the head unit, obviously. The locating pins line up. Let me throw this over here, I'm running out of time. So, LoneStarMopars.com, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, let us know your thoughts, hopefully this helped you out. But again, awesome way to end Sunday night.